Yo, what's up everyone? Brent here, and this is going to be a Viper commentary. So I'll be playing Viper in the safe lane this game. I picked Viper here because they had a Bat, an Alchemist, and a Disruptor. And Viper is just, just amazing versus all three really since they lack hard physical damage, and they all have AoE damage over time, meaning Course of Skin's debuff that does damage over time will be really effective, especially if I can just survive in fights. Uh, we also had a Tiny and a Windrunner before I picked, so I wanted something for the safe lane that could do well, even versus an aggro dual lane, and also not need much farm since we already had a lot of carry power. Uh, in this game, I was also playing with the leader himself, known as Chalon Kwa, who's on the Tiny in the offlane. We even have the infamous USC's player named Bulo on Jakiro, and we have, we have Did All Could playing the Pugna, and some random dude named Yoshi on the Windrunner mid. So I'm going to be laning with the Jakiro in the dual lane in the safe lane top. Um, we thought it was just going to be a solo, so, right, but, so I actually told Jakiro to go pull right away. But as we are going to quickly see, guys, it is not a solo offlaner. It's a bat with a panda, and <laughs> bat's just getting really aggro on me. Just constantly, just using napalm, being extremely aggressive, and. He has boots as well, so I'm just constantly using my orb, guys, because he's kind of overextending right here. And Jakir's also used his orb and also just auto attacking him. Um, and right there, guys, I was actually constantly using my poison attack because I think there's like a misconception that even in early into the game that you can use poison attack and then your normal auto attack with your poison attack constantly being on them, but that's not true, guys, because in between your second auto attack and your third uh, the poison will actually run out before your third hit so it's not gonna con it's not always gonna be on them because Viper's attack speed is really low in the early game so to get the most damage out of this in, in the early game if you're going on a target they especially one that you wanted to kill like the bat rider you want to constantly be using uh, your poison attack so just something to note I w it might be obvious to some people but um, yeah I just want to say that so, um, our lane is actually kind of bad as well, until we get some levels. Uh, Viper's, weak, Viper's weakest laning point is definitely level 1. Uh, he starts, he kind of hits like a power spike in lane once he gets like level 4 or so. Or like level 3, depending on who you're against. But since we're against a dual lane, it's kind of tough. Um, so we get double slow on the panda. Uh, I guess he thought he was dead either way, so he got really aggressive on us, but... I, I think if he just started running right away he would have been all right but so we get that kill i pick up a wand which is obviously really important important versus a bat rider who sp spams napalm stacks and a, a panda who's, who spams haze so i'm going to be able to get a lot of charges with that to both stay high in hp and just just always have enough mana to use my poison attack um, but as we can see the bat rider is going fucking ham mid onto the wind ranger so that's kind of weird but that's just how Dota is right now, guys. Just gotta go crazy. Um, so we have a double archer right here pushing in. I want to be I want to be aggressive on the panda here, for sure. But going for those last hits right there. Um, something to note though is if if you saw earlier the panda, he actually went for a poor man shield, so he is actually really really damn tanky against just my auto attacks. Um, so he is really survivable right now, but. So I want to auto attack him whenever I can. Just cutting this wave back, and Jakiro's actually farming, farming neutrals over here. So I kind of want to stay in this area. I'm taking the creeps. I didn't pull it all the way back to the tower because I want to stay over here in case Panda goes and contests the Jakiro who's farming. So Jakiro's even using his orb on the Panda instead of the neutrals, but he's going for he's going for the large creep right now. So I definitely want to be going for him. So I'm using my orb right now. I have boots. And we're going to have the slow from Jakiro. So if he went for the right, he was definitely dead. So his decision to go back to the left is definitely uh, smart right here. But yeah, so uh, yeah, so the Pugna manages to clean up. That's actually a really big kill. Um, so Batrider is using his Napalm, going on me with Firefly. I know that I can actually tank some damage, even without Crocif. So I turn around and get two auto attacks off before running. Um, but <laughs> uh, Batrider survives and Jakir actually goes down because uh, Disruptor rotated. <laughs> yeah, safe lane is fucking crazy right now. 
in these days, guys. Just a lot of back and forth action. That's why Viper is a uh, heroes like Viper, Juggernaut, and stuff like these type of carries are being uh, put in the safe line, like Razor, Queen of Pain, stuff like that, because uh, it's just hard, like I've been talking about in my other videos, for a normal carry to really deal with these type of aggro lanes um, and all these rotations from supports. Um, but obviously, you don't want you don't want to have like a hero like Viper guys in the safe lane if your other two lanes don't consist of like any carry power. But since we had a Windrunner mid and a tiny off lane, it doesn't really matter too much that that we're we're taking up the safe lane slot with a Viper. Like we already have enough carry power in the other lanes, and we're going on the we're going on the Panda right here. So if you manage to get it slow, I'm using my poison auto attacking in between my auto, auto or moving between my auto attacks. But I got sent back by the disruptor. So obviously a very a smart play by the disruptor to send me back instead of the Jakiro right there. Um, but we have uh, it's something to note, guys. We have two archers and a catapult, and Tiny Chilin Kwa actually TP's top. He's gonna be nuking this wave, so this is actually a really smart rotation. Uh, he rotated right when we had the double archer and and the catapult, and because this is like this is like the best time to like take a tower early, guys, especially against like a lineup that has an alchemist. Um, any pressure and any like gold advantage that we can get really early is gonna like translate into being able to like build a, a larger lead. Uh, Jakiro even like he actually pulled the creeps there to farm uh, the neutrals, but it doesn't really matter. We're gonna be able to get this tower either way. So really smart rotation from CLQ, and yeah, so it's a really early tower for us. Uh, gonna really help Jakiro and Pugna's gold, and even help Tiny get his blink up faster, but um, the bad thing about that though is taking an early tower does kind of hurt the the safe laner's EXP, so well it, it can hurt the safe laner's EXP if, if I deem that it's not safe enough to actually be near the enemy's tower, like in a situation like this. It's kind of it's kind of hard for me to be up here, I sh but yeah, I, like, I need to be able to get the CXP. Like Viper just, he can't jungle that quick, especially just a level five, and without having like level three points in poison attack. But just taking these creeps out uh, right here, guys. I was I was really worried because obviously I saw the disruptor up here with him, but I really wanted these creeps. Um, also, just want to be able to stay in exp range, but I want to see something happen here because I'm being really greedy and I can't even really auto attack efficiently with the the haze on me, 45% chance to miss. So, really effective versus Viper. And yeah, this is what I was worried about. I knew, I knew that the disruptor was up here too, but I was just being so damn greedy. Um, I get punished for it. So that's pretty bad. But yeah, at least we get the tr at least we get the turnaround kill on the disruptor. But I'm not even level six, guys. I'm not even level six, and it's almost eight minutes. So this is actually really bad for me so I'm just keeping back up here like I can't really rotate mid or mid or to the enemy safe lane right now at least until I get six and maybe get up like upgraded boots or something like I, I want those I want upgraded boots I want six before I start really rotating around and right now we even have this this wave that's pushing in so we're gonna have to be up here to to get exp so just Attacking these creeps. Obviously, Death Force's Bat Rider to come up here. He would be up here either way. Like, he's just he'll gladly take this farm. Since there's nothing to really for me to do, like I don't want to like stand there and hit the tower. I'm not going to be able to get that much damage in anyways. So I'm going to come over here right to the hard camp instead of wasting more time down there. And I'm just going to be orbing these down. Jakira's going to be helping me out with his orb as well. Yeah. So I'm just going to try and hit my six. Oh, in terms of item build, guys, which I haven't really been talking about, um, Ring of Aquila, kind of, it's, it's just a great item for agility heroes, obviously. Uh, gives you 18 damage, gives you some strength, the aura is great, uh, armor aura, mana, the mana region is really effective on a hero like Viper. Allows him to really be able to spam his poison attack and keep his mana high enough to always, always use Viper Strike, usually. Um, and, yeah, it's, it helps like for this for even just farming jungle guys. You can just spam your 
you're poisoned more than you would be able to without having like a bassy ring. Um, and then I have the ring of, then I have the ring of regen, which I'm going to be building into a mech. Just a great item on Viper for team fighting, and just making him tanky. Like if I can just get tanky this this game, like if I can get tanky this game, guys. The way I want to be playing the team fight is kind of like I want to have my corrosive skin on the alchemist by kind of like standing in his acid spray and like kiting in and out between it. Like I don't want to just be like standing in the acid spray idly. Um, I just want to be like standing in it, make a tick on the out, get out, and then once it wears out, I go back in. Like stuff like that. Same with the Bat Rider's Firefly, and even Disruptor to an extent. But I go up and I I bought Phase Boots. Um, right here guys because I really wanted this kill I thought I could have gotten him with these phase boots but so it, it ended up it ended up not working out um, but these boots phase boots aren't gonna be that bad either way this game uh, just because like I said like just being able to kite in and out between the enemy spells it's gonna be really effective with corrosive skin versus your heroes um, so yeah it's it's fine that I didn't go for treads I think this game phase is completely fine here I think but uh, at this point I'm level 7 I have my upgraded boots have my wand to quill out. now I want to try and get active like even though our late game is pretty good they still have an alchemist and like a panda who can build auras and even an LC like their late game is also fairly decent so I want to get aggressive on these lanes so what I'm just going to do here is I'm just going to pressure this lane in just shove the lane in and put on some tower Put on some tower pressure. Like we have, we have vision top because our lane, because our creep wave is pushed in. We're pressuring mid, so I'm not really too worried about getting ganked right here. Especially since they've been playing mostly in their offline. Like even right now, uh, they're going on tiny. So I'm and they're going on tiny, and we're pushing in mid. So we have really good vision on them. So I know I can just keep auto attacking here, guys, and just do some damage. So even though tiny died, it's still given me a lot of information to be able to get a lot of tower damage in. And Nether Toxin, Nether Toxin actually works on towers for anyone that uh, isn't aware, so this is something that makes them a pretty strong pusher. Just pushing the slant in. Yeah, so your game plan as Viper is to kind of just sit in lanes and be annoying. Uh, kind of like a, like a Venomancer and, and just have your presence be felt by the enemy team. Uh, create space, create space for your team, and if and if your team is the one that's creating space, kind of like what was just happening previously for that short amount of time, uh, when Tiny was top and we were pushing mid, I managed to take the tower out. So either way, he's just a very aggressive uh, lane-centric hero, I guess you could say. Yeah, he's just usually in lanes. He doesn't really. This jungle rotation is extremely slow, but right here, obviously, I don't have anything to do, so I might as well just go and hit neutrals. Like, I don't want to be just standing around wasting time. There's no point in me just standing at bottom near the tower, uh, near Pugna. So, yeah. Let's farm those neutrals. Now we're coming back. Thought, yeah, we thinking about getting a kill here. I think we're going to end up hiding. Or, I'm showing in lane, but... It's nighttime, so they might not have even had vision on Pugna. He might not have gotten close enough to the creeps. Yeah. Well, maybe they did. Uh, they might have. That's probably why Disruptor moved out, but... Oh, we see they're going on their Wind Ranger mid, so I'm just going to kind of just farm this right here. Uh, I don't think our team can really do anything. See LQ has to back up right there. But, actually, I'm charging over here, guys. Because our team is... We were saying that we wanted to fight here, so I'm just phasing over. So these phase boots are actually really, really good in this situation, where I just need the, the extra movement speed to get to the battle sooner. And yeah, there's a battle breaking out, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ulti right on the LC, and yeah, Pugna uses his combos. I want to get an auto attack on the panda from the high ground, so I move right next to the cliff and get some auto attacks from the low gun to ensure that kill. So one for two right there, definitely come out on top. Yeah, we come out on top right there. And this will free up some time, or some space for us to get some tower damage in. Got a catapult, two archers, and, like, Alchemist, he, he just, he's not ready to fight, guys. He's 0-1-3, CS isn't that great, so 
he still needs a lot more time to really come online. So Viper's re Viper's really good at just uh, pushing an advantage like this. Push Dota, yeah. Just fucking push the lanes, guys. Pretty simple hero, but I think he's all right right now. I think he's pretty decent. It's normal on the LC2. Challenge quad just fucking blinks in there, combos him. Goes down. Pen is playing really aggressively. He's been playing really aggressively this whole game, but actually that wasn't that bad because he popped his ult. But I have a mech, and they still don't have enough damage. So them fighting into a mech on Viper right now is definitely not that good, guys. And they're just like sticking around near the Pugna. We have all this like damage over time, actually. Yeah, so they kind of overextend right there. <laughs> Fucking yeah. All right. Yeah, we're even playing, man, we're getting really aggressively on him. Tail kill blinks into the base, and magic at the alchemist as well. So, yeah, we're being really fucking aggressive. And we're actually just going to take this tower early. And, yeah. So, pretty much standard 6.85 here, guys. So whoever has, like, the better battling heroes, like, comes out on top usually. Um... As long as like you're coordinated, uh, and obviously I was queuing with these guys, but the enemy team was also a stack, so yeah. So I'm coming over here. We got the mid tower. We can't take the racks, but I'm just gonna go back to farming. Obviously Viper doesn't farm that fast, but you want to be doing something. Just kind of kiting this this hard neutral camp around right here. I'm gonna overextend a little bit. I don't think we really should have gone for this. Um, Pop my mech just to help Tiny out there and the Pugna, even though I was full on HP. I, I can probably get this LC. Yeah, he can't. He can't toggle against the poison damage, and I'm gonna be chased on by the with the napalm from the bat, and I get sent back from the destructor. So I can't really escape. Yeah, I'm gonna die right here for sure. It's kind of overextension from our team, but at least at least we got one, I guess. Actually, how close is the elk? So Elk is pretty close to his Radiance, but still, he's still going to need the Radiance on top of probably a Manta before he can really start doing doing stuff against our team. And even then, he'll need some more HP versus like Tiny combo and like a Windrunner follow-up. So probably he needs like a Manta and the Octarine before he can start doing anything in real team fights. So we ping Roche. want to take this Roche. That's yeah, going to be really important for going high ground. So getting kind of serious at this point in the game. Uh, if we can get the Aegis on like... Like, I, I don't want the Aegis, guys, in situations like these. Even though you might think that Viper should be the one carrying the Aegis. Um, like, the thing is... Even though Viper is an okay Aegis carrier because he's pretty tanky, he can go up and get, get some tower damage in, in between waves on the racks. Um, just being able to have it on the Wind Ranger, who does insane damage, who also is really survivable with Run Run, and and just being able to use her ultimate on the racks. It's gonna be more. Imp it's gonna be more important on her to have the Aegis uh, for this type of push. I can just kind of stay in the back. Like if they overcommit on Wind Runner with the Aegis still up, then her team can probably take just a really easy team fight, and that even uh, forces a buyback from the Legion Commander for that gank. This. We're going on the yeah, Batrider pulls him in, so that's why I ult him right there, just to slow him down. I move into the Firefly guys just to toggle my Crossus skin on him. He ends up going down, and then I immediately change targets to the, the LC. There was no need to like go charging at the Batrider anymore. He was dead for sure. If I can get the if I can get the LC low enough, he, he yeah, he can't he can't toggle. He cannot toggle against this type of hero. We're just poisoning them. That's just really good. So we managed to get them, and where is yeah, the Alchemist, so what happened there, guys, is actually Chalon Claw, he TP top, and he fucked with the Alchemist while we were taking that push, so that was really smart of him to do that. Um, it made it so that Alchemist, their most farmed hero, just wasn't able to even be there in the fight, so it, it might have been, might have seemed weird that Tiny TP top, but him TPing top basically just ensured that we got the racks really easily because the Alk was just... He wasn't able to get there in time. I mean, he's, he's here now, but it's too late for their team. Let's 
seals up right there. But he's really squishy at this point. Even the even the radiance burn is toggling off my corrosive. Or it's toggling my corrosive, I should say. Um, it's really rough for the alchemist right now. I really think this this hero is really strong versus alchemist guys. Um, between corrosive and just high physical damage with nether toxin, and just being able to kite him around, because he's still a melee hero. Uh, Viper does really good, but you need to make sure that when you pick a Viper, guys, especially safe lane, <clears throat> that your that your other two cores in the other lanes have some carry power. Bat Rider's pulling in the bet. Bat Rider's pulling in Jakiro. Can't really help him right there. Get sent back to the same positioning. And we just kind of have to run at this point. Like, we're too low. I was telling my team to run, but... Like, Chalon Kwa said, fuck it, he's going to re-engage right here. So, kind of walking over. And he ends up going down, but still get the brew at least. And we might get the LC. Actually, I'm getting sent back. Yeah, we're not going to get the LC with me being sent back. Oh, and something else to know is I got the Vlads, guys. Well, I think this this item is just broken too right now in this patch. Like we're all we're doing really is just team fighting, and Vlad is just such a such a good team fighting item. Um, just the sustain it's going to give is really good versus all of their damage over time. Um, the physical damage it gives to all of your heroes is really good versus Alchemist. He doesn't have much armor, so it helps your entire team just attack him down a lot quicker. Um, so it's just a really it's a great team fighting item. And I even go for Greaves. Like With Greaves and Vlads, there's absolutely no way that these guys are really going to be winning a team fight unless... Alchemist like pulls out a miracle and like gets like a few items up, but he's gonna be going down here even. He kinda just runs up to the wave, taking a risk in terms of farming and he gets punished. Probably didn't expect that the win runner to be there, but I was playing around with a shadow amulet. No real strategic value to this, but Bat Rider's doing the smart thing. He's using Firefly during or before the push to clear the wave and to aggro the wave back. But we're actually just so far ahead that we can just kind of auto attack this tower down. Just pushing it. Like the Alchemist has to even deal with like the Jakiro pushing top in. So Alchemist was top, we, we know that. Uh, Bat's getting, Bat's pulling the Pugna, but it's really survivable right now. And uh, Elsie's, yeah, really good combo as well right there from Tiny. Uh, Panda Man is going to split off, but they don't even have, they don't even have a, that much damage right now, especially against Grease and Vlad's guys. Like they do not have enough physical damage right now. And the Knight, well, the battle's still going on, but. Yeah, but we're taking the racks. Windrunner is taking the racks. So even though we're fighting, it doesn't really... It's not like we're overextending. At the very least, we're creating space. And we've got the melee racks right there. But the uh, Guardian Greed is, as I've kind of talked about before, if, if the enemy team has like these magical abilities, especially damage over time, like Alchemist, like Batrider, Disruptor all, um... The HP region that you get, once you get past the threshold, the 20% HP threshold, get below it, your hero gets below it, you start, you get that extra boost of 15 HP region, and that's able to just keep you alive uh, on top of the armor it gives. So, yeah, all their damage over time is just really hard countered by the Greaves. So, that was a really, pretty quick game, pretty fun though. Um, Kind of interesting game. Yeah. But our lineup definitely did what it could have been able to do and should have been able to do. We pushed early. Um, even if it went late game, we probably would have been alright since I think we had enough carry power, but 
Uh, thanks for watching, guys. See you later.